Hey, Mr. Pash here. Um, today I'm going to show you in this video how to get started with your final Zentangle animal. And there's a couple ways we can do it. And in this video, I'm going to show you guys um, just kind of help to start break down the animal here. And so, um, you know, I talked about choosing the best reference. Um, I would suggest using really large clear pictures of animal heads sometimes working with the full bodies um get you know kind of gets us caught up in too many details and forms so just kind of looking at the head is one good way to start that if you want to do a complete animal that's totally fine maybe smaller animals would be best suited for that like small birds or squirrels or bunnies or something like that uh, it just depends you just want a large clear picture Anyway, so um, for this video, what we're going to be talking about is how to get started um, breaking down uh, the shapes um, into simple shapes for the for um, these Zentangle animals. Now, um, when we're looking at the final references of these, you know, with anything in art, we're looking at the final, the final <laughs> edition. And sometimes that can be very scary and daunting. And I can tell the viewer like, oh, I can't do that. I, I don't, there's way too much detail. I, I don't even want to get started on that. Um, but I'm going to tell you, you know, um, hopefully you guys learned through the six week course that breaking down, um, as I should say, you know, a lot of artists, excuse me, actually start very simply um, with a lot of their um, ideas um, in the beginning idea. So that's what we're going to do here is start off with some basic shapes. So how do we see those basic shapes? Um, what I would recommend is, for one way, is to print out your pictures really large. This is uh, eight and a half by 11. Hopefully you guys have access to the printer because it will help you out here. Um, if not, you'll have to kind of do it by eye, but you know, make sure you guys see a large image, uh, even if it's on a computer screen. And uh, I did black and white just so I don't get confused by color. And I did two because I want to keep one just for some extra details here. And so um, this one I'm going to kind of mess up. So this is going to help me get started. What I'm going to do is look at the forms or what I visualize as big, bold shapes and start to detail those. Okay. And I guarantee if you print it out more and you started the trace doing the same technique, I guarantee you would do it different every time. So what that tells you is there's no one way to exactly do that. Okay, you're going to see different things. Okay. All right, so um, I'll kind of get started. This is a symmetrical picture. So I'll kind of get started in this area. For our final uh, illustration, we want the eyes to look realistic, and possibly the nose, um, if we can. What I'm looking at is kind of the white areas, the gray areas, and the darker areas. I'm going to get really confused with the spots. I'm going to try to ignore those because I don't want to do really small um, shapes at this point. Okay, I'm just kind of looking for the bigger forms. All right, so the nose, and we also see like the black stripes already outlining the nose, so I don't even need to draw that. But what I see here in this area is kind of like the white area so maybe i'll just start off mapping those out i'll actually use a little bit darker i'm using kind of just a light marker you guys can use a pen and let's see i kind of see like a little triangular shape here yeah maybe just kind of create a little shape out of that all right i kind of see the eye pockets pulling out here and some of the stuff you're going to make up you're not going to see shapes so Maybe I'll just kind of follow that around and then pull that into the eye. And that looks pretty good. All right. I'm do the same thing for the other side. And then I see the white section here kind of stops right here. I'm looking this the same things happen over there. And I'll just do a very simple round shape. A little bit smaller here. All right. And let's see, I kind of get picking up this. So I'm going to kind of overlap that, bring that in. It's looking pretty cool. I could probably even dissect that down even further if I wanted to. Um, maybe I'll do that. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I'll just leave it right now. Okay. And let's see, 
I'm seeing like this kind of white crown area, definitely the dark pulling up here. So I don't know if I really want to emphasize that. Maybe it's just uh, something that kind of does that. All right. And let's see, just kind of outline that just like a basic shape for that. Okay. And I like these two spots here. I think eventually I'm going to see like little teardrops pulling up here. It's kind of hard to see when I trace it, but maybe um, I'll let those kind of overlap into this shape. And I'm not worrying about the little furry hair. I'm just going to go right through that. Okay, don't get caught up in the details on this. Sorry about that. I'm going to keep that symmetrical here. Maybe I'll split that. All right, and let's see, kind of the head. Again, not getting caught up in the fur. And let's see, maybe kind of seeing this shoot through. I don't really see it on this side, but I'm gonna repeat that. That looks cool. And see how I'm kind of overlapping the shapes here? That's gonna give it some depth. And a bigger shape here. It's good, good to have those big, bold, big shapes here, and that's not symmetrical, but that's just a sketch. And then I see the chin. And then I see some extra fur area. I don't know if I'll add this. Maybe I'll just keep the chin, but just kind of around that. And then obviously this part, and I see some, this looks pretty cool. See some smaller shapes here. So I'm gonna do that while I have the opportunity to do so. I don't see it so much here, but let's see. Looks pretty cool. And that's pretty much it. Obviously the ear and maybe, so I'm gonna, don't worry about the fur shapes. We do that later. Okay, this is gonna, just gonna help us with our sketching the paper. And it looks pretty good uh, for now. Um, I, I'm going to break it down even further in pencil once I get it on um, paper. But that's going to help me get started right there. And I'm feeling pretty good about that. Um, again, if you're not happy with the result, um, do it again. I'm going to be honest with you guys. I already did one. And it looked kind of different. And, uh, you know, I decided to do a different tutorial that would be a little bit cleaner. But look at that. I kind of did one that I didn't like and I just printed it out again and um, I didn't have this planned out. It just kind of came out a little bit better for me. So art is a process. Sometimes you just got to keep going through it. But the point is um, uh, for this one, you kind of want to get started off in the right direction. So you have that good intention, that feel good to kind of pull you through to the end of this. Okay. On the next video, what you're gonna see is the time-lapse video of me illustrating, okay? Here's kind of a final example there, which is gonna be a little bit different because I'm, I'm using a different reference here, but obviously with the cheetah, um, you know, when I put it down on paper, it kind of looked like just a regular cougar or jaguar. And the cheetah is has the little spots, very indicative right here. So I added some little spot details um, in addition to the larger shapes here. Um, so you'll see that through the video. Now to get started on the drawing, okay? This is eight and a half by 11. Hopefully you guys are working with nine by 12 to give you a little bit extra space. What I want you guys to use is a pencil. Okay, don't start off with pen, please don't. And when you uh, work with pencil, um, you know, do, do it really light. Hold it loosely, hold it towards the back and just like allow yourself to sketch it. Now. If you can see it, you're good, okay? A lot of beginning drawers just tend to like draw really dark right away, you know? Um, that's where you're gonna make mistakes because you're gonna have to change things up as you go and you're gonna wanna erase too. So having that lighter line uh, will help you erase a lot better than the darker line. You know, when you have to erase that darker line, it takes a long time and it gets really frustrating because uh, sometimes it doesn't erase all the way. So really light line, and I'm telling you guys this now because the next video is gonna be a time-lapse where I won't be able to 
really talk too much. Just watch how I kind of break it down, simple shapes, large to small. And then the next step after the time lapse would actually be to take your Zentangles, you know, some of the thumbnails that you guys might have done or some examples that you found online and just put on your laptop and actually just kind of emulate those shapes inside of these and also break it down with pencil. Once we're done with the full pencil sketch and you feel pretty good about it, that's where you out outline and pen. And that's the fun part because you got all the design ready to go and you're just um, trying not to make a mistake for sure, but uh, really mapping out uh, with pen.